Hi, I am Dr. Golda Brunet and welcome to the course Digital Principles and System Design. In this video lecture, I am going to discuss about the course content that we will be looking throughout this course. This course is based on the syllabus framed under 2018 regulation by Government College of Engineering, Salem. So the title of the course is Digital Principles and System Design. What is the system that we are speaking here? For any computer science and engineering student, the system means the computer. And that is what we also mean in the title. So the de system design here actually mean the design involved in, construct in the construction of a computer. What are the fundamental components that are linked together to make a computer and what is the fundamental logical component involved in developing the individual components of the computer that is what we will be dealing in detail and why should we learn the digital principle because the computer cannot understand our natural language like English or Tamil so we have to understand the language of the machine so that we can instruct the machine so what the what a machine can understand it can understand only the presence of voltage or the absence of voltage which is represented by one and zero the presence of voltage will represent by one and the absence of voltage by zero so we wanted to know how we can communicate with ones and zeros and that is what we are going to learn in digital principles and finally why should we learn this subject today everywhere the word digital is so popular we call our country as digital india uh, we have digital communication everywhere the digital word digital is so popular smartphones smart tvs everything around us have become digital in nature after learning this course we might not be able to design some complex systems but small circuits which are monitoring in nature which we wanted for ourselves that we can design we need not go for any general purpose circuits and invest large amount of money but rather we can design our own monitoring system using simple circuits that we will be learning in this course say for example this is a lockdown period and you are watching my lecture assume that i have a baby and i can record such video lectures only when the baby is sleeping i want the baby to sleep in a separate room so that uh, it will not get disturbed by by my recording but at the same time i should also be aware when the baby is awake even when i am not in the same room where the baby is sleeping i can set a small circuit by which i can detect when the baby is awake say for example i am putting a vibration sensor on the cradle when the baby is turning over while it is sleeping the vibration of the cradle will be less but when the baby is really awake okay the vibration of the cradle is going to be more so i can set a threshold on this vibration and have a simple comparator which will check whenever the reading from the vibration sensor is violating this threshold it can activate a bulb in the room where i am recording which will blink and by seeing that i can suspend the recording and go and attend the baby so i for this simple circuit i need not invest money in so so much of sophisticated circuit a general purpose one and so on i can design my own circuit and use it for my personal purpose so such simple circuits you will be able to design when you complete this course the course objectives are as follows to comprehend the digital language boolean laws and boolean functions basically we will be understanding the binary language and then the laws governing the binary language this is the boolean laws and boolean functions and then to understand the design of fundamental combinational and sequential circuits of a computing device that is the existing circuits in a computer 
the existing circuits in a computer can be classified into two types one is the combinational circuit the other is the sequential circuit and the third objective is to analyze and design combinational and sequential circuits in general given some problem we should be able to design some combinational or sequential circuit or if some circuit is already available and we are unaware of its functionality we should be able to analyze the circuit the outcome based on these objectives are apply boolean laws to derive simplified boolean function and implement the circuit with logic components uh, basically since we are going to implement the circuit that means that we are going to realize the circuit in hardware we wanted to minimize the cost that means that we have to implement the simplified boolean function at the end of the course you should be able to simplify the boolean functions if possible and the second outcome is to reproduce the existing design of combinational or sequential circuits of a computing device and scale them in size we will be dealing with the existing circuit and that you should be able to reproduce because it is all standard and we have nothing great to do about that but the second component the scaling of them and the course whenever we are teaching we will be dealing the components in small scale and suppose if you are asked to increase its size you should be able to scale them up and the last outcome is to analyze and design simple combinational or sequential circuits so from the examination point of view the first outcome based on the first outcome that can be questions from application point of view or even in the synthesis point of view and the second outcome will be just recalling or comprehension based questions and the scaling will be some analysis oriented questions and the last outcome analyze and design will be based on the analysis or the synthesis in the bloom's taxonomy the course content is like this the first unit will be dealing with the number systems will be dealing with four number systems and why four number systems will deal when we actually look into these topics and binary arithmetic to understand how the computer operates with ones and zeros and is there any other binary codes apart from uh, the binary number system itself that is what we will deal here and the laws governing the binary language that is the boolean algebra and theorems boolean functions and then finally how to simplify the boolean functions we will look into two different simplification techniques one is the carnot map the other is the queen maklatsky method and finally we will be looking into the logic gates by which we will be realizing the boolean functions in second unit we will be dealing with the combinational logic we will see the general analysis and design procedures and then standard circuits which are available in arithmetic and logic uh, unit which are which is the half adder full adder half subtractor full subtractor adder and subtractor together carry look ahead adder uh, decimal adder binary multiplier magnitude comparator code conversion circuits all these okay so we will look into both the standard circuits available in alu as well as given any problem how to design any generic combinational logic which is simple in nature and in third unit we'll deal about the medium scale integration of combinational logic which includes the decoder encoder multiplexer demultiplexer and how to realize boolean functions with all these uh, components decoders encoders multiplexer demultiplexers are very essential components of computers and if without them the computer cannot even operate the next set of circuit that we are going to consider is sequential circuit and in this unit we will consider only synchronous sequential circuit 
sequential circuit will involve memory components and we will realize the memory components using sr latch uh, and flip flops and types of flip flops and general procedure involved in analyzing and designing synchronous sequential circuits in fourth unit we will deal with uh, registers counters and timing signal generating counters and finally the memory components how we can integrate the flip flops to design memory a programmable memory and all those things we will deal it in fourth unit in fifth unit we will discuss the design and analysis procedure of asynchronous sequential circuit we will discuss the difference between combinational circuit sequential circuit asynchronous sequential circuit when we actually discuss these topics in the course the prescribed textbook is digital design with in, with an introduction to the verilog hdl by morris mano and michael siletti the entire content of the course is available in this book however you can also refer to the reference book fundamentals with digital logic design with verilog by stephen brown and one co ranizik digital principles and design by donald jivon fundamentals of logic design by charles roth and larry kenny and i have also given the e learning resources from two nptel courses which you can listen and they are really useful in understanding this course finally we will discuss about the scheme of evaluation the end semester exam will contribute to 60% of your marks which is a 3 hour closed book written exam internal marks contribute to 40% of your marks we have three components in assessing the internal we have three continuous assessment test which is contributing around 75 percentage in this 40 percentage which is actually 30 marks in absolute each continuous assessment test is 90 minute written exam close book and we will have average of all the three continuous assessment tests and we will have three assignments which contribute to five marks and we will have tutorials and objective tests which is are again five marks this tutorial and objective tests can be surprised or it can be scheduled what i have planned is since this is a lockdown period after watching every video lecture i thought of giving you an evaluation Um, based on multiple choice questions and you can answer them and i will consider all the multiple choice questions that you are going to answer after every video lecture which will be counted in your internal assessment so please take it seriously so in the next video lecture we will start with the actual course with the number system and we will look into the decimal number system binary number system octal and hexadecimal number system in detail and thank you for watching this video